with me, Trish. I'm back again for the finals to talk about the Amulet and the Yamamani Societies. So let's get started. So first we're going to talk about the Inuit civilization. The Inuit were known as the people and they spoke traditional oral language of Inuktitut. They are typically known as Eskimos and reside in the Arctic region. The language spoken by these individuals is called linguistic chain, which is understood by all parties within the Inuktitut Inuk Inuk dialect and, var and variations depending on the region. These individuals occupy lands that exceed 12,000 miles from parts of Siberia along the Alaskan coast across the, from Canada's tree line. This group of natives can be located within Arctic Canada, Northern Alaska, Greenland, as well as Russia. Their population consists of, one, of, us, of an estimated 160,000 individuals spread throughout these different regions. The survival of the Inuit people is based on the resources, methods, and tools they've created and utilized within their environment. Housing. The Inuit reside in two forms of housing. So they did, some of them do. Amid the warmer months, the people live the people lived in huts and tents made from animal skin stretched over a frame. During the colder months, their homes were built from snow bricks and constructed constructed in the forms of an igloo. Today, there are still some, still some who follow the Inu, the Inuit tradition regarding housing. However, for those more in tune with society and have been familiar familiarized with modern technology, government housing is accessible with electricity and running water. Their diet: the diet was mainly composed of meat due to lack of greenery and plant sources. They they were able to provide hunting for their family. They were able to provide food for their children by hunting and fishing, and the foods were mainly, that were mainly eaten were fish, whales, and horses. Today, they do more trading than hunting and gathering, though. For the economic organization, long ago, the traditions for the Inuit consisted of hunting and gathering and living off of the resources around them. Today, there is an increase within the methods used by the Inuit, such as the incorporation of technology. The Inuit who did not utilize forms of currency in the past now possess jobs to earn wages <coughs> for goods and services such as electricity. As cited in Stern 2005, sorry, I'm coming out with like some kind of flu or something. Access to reliable source of cash was essential to the continuation <coughs> of the land-based economy so that even in the early 1960s, with only casual wage employment and little of that in existence, wage took precedence over subsistence hunting. The adaption of trade seen within fur also aided in the swift and shift away from subsistence harvesting, with items such as rifles, tea, tobacco, and flour becoming in this. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I'm sorry, indispensable thus resulting in a dependency to provide for these new basic necessities. For their political organization, the Inuit possessed little to no political structure or chain of command, though temporary leadership may be granted. The temporary form, this temporary form of leadership may have been seen when respected hunters take the initiative as opposed to delegating this position, I'm sorry, I see a typo. This, um, his position as leader was revoked once the task was complete. Since violence is often avoided, individuals who are too bossy or pushy may be shunned or isolated from the community. These individuals leave, live in small groups, often consisting of parents, grandparents, children, aunties, uncles, that will live under one shelter. While hunting and gathering, the men from these smaller families will also come together as a larger unit to hunt and to share. The food collected was considered community property. These individuals are considered a peaceful society. Per Robbins and Dowdy, 2016 typo. The Inuit believe that strong thoughts can kill or cause Ill illness, and they go to great pains to satisfy other people so resentment does not build up. Their religion. 
The Inuit were, were animists and practiced shamanism, though today many practice Christianity. The Inuit had a strong belief that people, animals, and forces of nature all possessed the spirit. The spirits played a critical role in their perception of living. Shaman or healer who was in touch with the spirits and performed shamans were, were in touch with the spirits and performed religious ceremonies. They believed the animals hunted had souls that deserved their respect, so they gave them names on Enua. They were also huge on storytelling, which is how spirits such as Naliwit, spirit of the sea that controls the sea mammals, became. Inuit family structure. The Inuit believed in monogamy. It was of much importance to this clan. Those there, though there were times where their marriages may have been arranged, it was customary of one male and female, one with men hunting and building, and women cooking and creating clothing. This group usually lived in families of five to six persons, but lived among six to ten other families. Gender roles. As a society of peace, the men and women are considered equal and share responsibilities. Those specific gender roles are assigned. Men are typically the hunters and females the gatherers, both sexes fishing when needed. Per the, the Parakitit in, Inuit women of Canada, the men generally possess more authority outside the home where the females control have more control over the inside of the home. In today's economy, Inuit men partake in mixed economy with limited jobs. So sup to supplement the income, they return to the traditional hunting and fishing as a food source and additional revenue. Women perform household duties, cooked, babysat, cleaned the home, create and repaired clothing. With greater access to full-time work, the women have become the breadwinners. The Yanomami Civilization. The Yanomami tribe are a group of indigenous people who date back as far as 1759. These individuals reside in the Orinco River Basin in southern Venezuela and the Amazon Basin of northern Brazil. According to the Council on Hemispheric Affairs, Hemispheric Affairs 2010, the Yanomami numbered approximately 29,000 in 2005, with 14,000 living within Brazil. They are dispersed throughout this region and now live at low population densities. There is also a Yanomami population known as the Maxitao, who have been unexposed to the world living in higher parts of Yanomami territory, which encounter illegal gold miners. The Yanomami speak the language called Yanomami. The dialects used vary based on the location. Some of these dialects were the Yanomam, Mamen, Yanom, Yanomam, <laughs> Mam, Yanome, Nanomam, Zamatari and Koho Zixtari. The language spoken by this tribe is one that is hard to understand, unlike many others. It is, in a sense, secretive. They can take one word and it can mean an entire phrase. For housing, the Yanomami were segregated into smaller groups or villages known as Shabonos, which consist of 50 to 400 individuals throughout the Amazon forest. These large circular homes were known as Yanos. Are also known as Yanos, are often used as the center for activities such as feasts, games, and rituals. Food is also prepared and cooked here throughout the day. At nighttime, hammocks are raised next to a lit, a lit fire to provide warmth. For food consumption, in comparison to the Inuit, whose diet mainly consisted of meat, the Yanomami tribe selection was of much more variety. These foods consist of plantains, cassava, corn, nuts, fruits, seeds, deer, fowl, monkey, armadillos, and wild honey. For the mode of subsistence, similarly to the Inuit, the Yanomami are also hunters and gatherers. However, these individuals feed off of items such as fish, bananas, and cassava, typically found in warmer climates. A woman's brother is considered her protector even after she is well married and can intervene in situations such as physical abuse, which is seen throughout this tribe. No hunter eats the meat that he has killed. Instead, he shares it out amongst friends and family. In return, he will be given meat by another hunter. For the economic organization, as described by Lizotte 1977, for the Yanomami to eat adequately, the workload compiled uh, into hunting and gathering of a woman must last two hours <clears throat> and 26 minutes, 
and two hours and 50 minutes for men. The Yanomami also indulge in trade seen through primary sources such as hallucinogenic, hallucinogenic plants, domesticates like cotton or good, <clears throat> sorry, hunting dogs, even dependent on materials such as ashes, aluminum, cooking pots, machetes, fish hooks, which they receive from missionaries as gifts and wages. They also sell merchandise such as baskets and arrows. Resulting in the discovery of gold, miners and cattle ranches have been found to contaminate the Yanomami's economic resources and territories with little aid from the government, threatening the health and existence of this tribe. Because of this epidemic, acts of violence have been exchanged. Where the Inuit sought peace, the Yan Yanomami may have have to fight for their survival with little rights to the land they, that they call home. Their political organization. There is no political structure and equality is common among them, despite living in a va varied size group from 40 to 400. However, the Yanomami tribe is different in that they possess a tribe, a, a village head. This individual is not necessarily, necessarily responsible for making decisions for the tribe, but also settling disputes for tribe members, um, enemies, and allies. For religion, there is no political structure and equality is common among the own. Oh, sorry, that's a typo. However, the Yanomami tribe is the... Ah, I see what I did. Okay, continue. Catch up. The Yanomami... I'm going to start right here, guys. The Yanomami practice, practice in amonism and shamanism and believe... That plants and animals around them have spirits. The Yanomami believe that illness is a result of the Heka spirits and can be conquered through shamanism. The shamans may only have access to the Heka, are the only ones who have access to the Hekras when under hallucinogens, also known as Yopo. Caring for the body after earth is also crucial as it has much emphasis on the placement of the soul. Unlike the Inuit, the Catholic and the Protestant religions have reached out for conversion but have had little success. Their family structure. The Yanomami tribe has a marriage kinship of polygamy. Due to the many military attacks, the need for reproduction and survival have become of much importance. Therefore, these individuals are involved with more than one woman. The rituals are performed by elders and the girls are selected before puberty. The family structure can be composed of up to 400 individuals. The smaller groups with when the Jobas prepare and cook their families' food separately. For gender roles, the Yanomami are characterized by male dominance and inflict violence upon the women in this society. From a young age, male children are taught to inflict violence against one another and to bully their girls. Traditionally, the Yanomami themselves are concerned primarily with food, spirits, and ta taboos, and only secondarily with marriage, reproduction, raids, and feasts. Gender roles of a man include all of the more massive workloads such as hunting and the killing of large game. Nevertheless, there are, there are responsibilities within women that may be considered dangerous and the men will complete the task. These tasks can be seen as the slash and burn techniques used, though the woman is responsible for gardening. The women's roles within this tribe are reproduction, given the shortage, household duties such as cooking and tending to children and gardening. For threats as of late, we spoke about this a little bit, but they've been undergoing threats from the outside world. Gold miners, cattle ranchers have legally entered their land and they have uh, infiltrated and transmitted diseases such as malaria and polluting of the forests and rivers with mercury. The Brazilian government is of little assistance and it aims to pass a bill that would allow large scale mining in these indigenous territories. The role on race. Race is a prominent role in the way both indigenous groups are perceived. These individuals are taken advantage of regardless of trade, where they are expected to pay ridiculous prices for products or trade agreements that fall through as seen in the Yanomami's violent conflicts with other tribes and allies. Even the Inuit being discriminated against and called Eskimos or raw fish eaters when fish is one of their natural resources. Finally, the Brazilian government and its lack of aid or regards to the Yanomami's culture and environment and health are all um, different forms of discrimination on the race of role. I mean, the, they all play a role in race and how people are perceived based on their ethnicity. Ethnicity. <laughs> I'm so tired. Ethnicity. That is my presentation. I'm sorry if I sound very hoarse. I hope you have a great evening. I'm coming down with the flu.
best of luck to 